G'day, I'm Paul. Look, I love big shouty sports cars, but I also love Audi performance cars. They may not be all about, you know, frying tires and making bucket loads of noise, but they get the job done. They're nice and quick and they are incredibly smooth. And how good does that look? That is the all new Audi S6. This right here is priced at just under $150,000. It competes with cars like the BMW M550i and the Mercedes AMG E53. Today, we're going to do a detailed review to see if it drives as nicely as it looks. Now, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there. Or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down to the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe, press the bell icon, that will tell you every single time we drive a nice looking car. So let's talk exterior. And I'm going to wow you right now because nine colors available. Now, unlike a lot of other brands, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars just because you don't like white. They're all free. You can pick any of the nine colors and Audi won't charge you any more money. So big win there. Now, why do I think this car looks nice? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I just think it looks really classy. And the way that they've put this black highlights package on the S6 just really gives it that extra bit of style. So it's black here at the front. You get black on the mirrors, you get black on the roof and then on the A pillar there. And it really sets off nicely with the red. There's also a beautiful blue color you can get for the S6 as well. So on the front here, proudly worn Audi badges, and then you'll see tucked away all of the sensors that are used for the safety systems and then front parking sensors as well. And little camera tucked into there too. Let me know in the comments below. Do you reckon this looks good? I think it looks really nice. Okay, headlights. Full LED matrix headlights. They look fantastic. You get LED daytime running lights as well. And then a fog lamp built into there. A couple of little air dams here to suck air through for that engine, which I'll tell you about soon. Now check this out. Yes, you get big 21 inch alloy wheels, but they are there to house these monster brakes. 400 millimeter rotors at the front, 350 at the rear. You can also option carbon ceramic here as well. I think this wheel design is okay. I'd probably pick something else. Kind of just looks a little bit plain and boring, but there are other 21 inch options you can choose from. Air suspension is standard, so hopefully that means this rides nicely and it's not too firm given how big these wheels are. Okay, let's talk about the side profile. This car's big and it looks big out on the road, so it's not quite A8 size, but you can see that it's not too far off. And that means it's going to take up a whole lot of room on the road. And I'm hoping it means it'll handle because a big car like this is a lot of weight to move around. Now, come and have a look at this. Okay, so this bit I like. So yes, the rear looks good. You've got your quad exhaust pipes. Oh, also FYI, S cars all get four exhaust pipes. RS cars get the two ovals. So every time you see that, you'll know which one's which. But Audi's LED game is massively strong. They flex big time with this stuff because they just want to show you how much effort they've put into making this lighting technology work. So you can see these vertical pillars here. They all light up individually as the car unlocks. And when you follow this at nighttime, it looks sensational. It's like a frosted LED and it blends in nicely with the red there as well. And then on the boot, you have a little lip spoiler there so that everyone knows that this thing is a little bit sporty plus some more black highlights. So yeah, big fan of the way this looks. So we're inside the S6 and this is a really special looking interior. Audi's gone to a lot of effort here to just make it feel and look premium. So you've got Nappa leather across the top of the dashboard on the sides of the car as well. You'll notice here, Alcantara built into the doors. So that gives you that nice soft touch. And this car has the optional open pore carbon weave trim. I'm a big fan of open pore wood, but this I haven't seen before. And I really like what they've done there. It just gives the car a bit more depth and a little bit more presence. And then they break up all of the black with this brushed aluminium. But there's a problem. Look at all this piano black. I'm just not a fan of that material because it scratches really easily, but also because it leaves fingerprints. And that's not the only place you're going to see fingerprints. Let me dart back to the home screen here. They are all over that screen, all over the drive select buttons down there. So unfortunately, this type of material is going to show up every little bit of nasty stuff you leave on it with your fingers. How soft is the Nappa leather though? We have a hardness tester and I've tested the surfaces. If you're interested to see how this car compares to other cars, just go down to the description. I've got a link there to a table where you can see what other results look like. Now, what about build quality? It's all built really well. And my usual test of flexing this, <laughs> you literally can't get it to move. It's like they've built this all out of one piece of very strong material. It is really impressive. 
Now let's jump over to infotainment. I'm gonna take you through a detailed review of Audi MMI plus the new secondary screen that sits beneath it, virtual cockpit and also the head up display. So let's get started because there is a lot to get through here. Up the top here, we have a 10.1 inch display. Looks really nice and high resolution, but it has a special feature and that is haptic feedback. So as you push your finger onto these, it lights up to give you an idea of the context of those menus. But then what you can do is push a little harder you get a click and then you feel it on the end of your finger so that you know that you've hit that button successfully. So really like the way that's set up. I'll take you through each of these menus. So if we jump into radio, you have AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio, plus the ability to stream online radio stations as well when you have a mobile paired device. Now you can use your telephone as the mobile device through Wi-Fi or in the glove box here, you can put an extra SIM card in as well. The car also has its own SIM card inside for connected services. Over in the media menu, this is where you'll find your Bluetooth devices, plus also USB connected devices or any other wirelessly connected devices to the car. Telephone, same story. You can either go down the path of smartphone mirroring or Bluetooth connectivity. Now keep in mind with smartphone mirroring, you won't need one of these anymore because it is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'll show you what that looks like. It is a really impressive system. It is incredibly high resolution and look how quickly it jumps through those menus. That is very, very impressive, that integration. What about navigation? I like the way that Audi has set this up. So it's a very fast screen, but you can see here that you have satellite overlays on the screen. And then if you do need to put navigation destinations in, you can either use the voice recognition system or type them in manually. So let's try Melbourne Airport, which is my go-to. You can use the screen down here as a typing pad. So I'll put in an M there. M or you can simply bring up the keyboard and type the rest in. So it's like your own mini computer. So let's give that a shot. Airport. I'm sure that in 20 years time, we'll look back at this and laugh, but for the moment, it's pretty cool. There you go, that's come up really nice and quickly. So very impressive inbuilt navigation, or you can just use your smartphone mirroring. Shortcut there for Apple CarPlay. Then you have your car settings. So this is where you can change everything to do with the car, everything from your seats to the lights and how far ahead they're going, your suspension settings, the emergency assist controls. If you're going to a racetrack or something, you can actually reduce any assistance on the car or you can shortcut straight to that menu by pushing here and then change the level of assistance you have. So it doesn't go off if there's other cars and stuff around you. There is a help menu. This is where you'll find some usage tips and also the inbuilt manual. So let's have a look here. Basic information will tell you how to connect your phone and all the other stuff that you'll eventually learn how to do yourself. Swipe across, you then have user settings. So if you have several people that drive the car, you can set up different user profiles and it will remember everything there. You can then also assign them to keys as well as required. Uh, you have messages built into the car, also weather. This is all via those wireless services. And then if you swipe down from the top there, you have shortcuts for audio settings, Wi-Fi, and then car profiles as well. So beneath the 10.1 inch screen, you also have a secondary 8.6 inch screen. This also has haptic feedback and features some of your most commonly accessed functions. So down the bottom, you'll see heated seats, the climate controls, which you can activate after switching off. There's a secondary menu that then brings up another context up the top for your fragrance. The ionizer, so the fragrance will pump out nice smells into the cabin. The ionizer will ionize the air in the cabin. And then you can also set custom functions up the top if you do want anything else to appear in that top screen. Now, moving on to virtual cockpit, that is the digital display ahead of the driver. This stuff has advanced so much since it was first launched. It now has super fast and super sharp graphics. So this is your default display. You can then range through the different items. We have radio, telephone, and then navigation. What you can then do is adjust the view. So you get super sized navigation. You get telephone with creepy images of your friends. You get radio display there and then trip computer as well. But what you can also do is change the feel of this by going into S performance mode. Have a look at that. You just get this space age looking display. And if I go back to navigation, how cool is that? So you're just getting all sorts of really interesting display options. And as you can see, everything is moving through very quickly. So that processor has some absolute grunt. Finally, you've also got a head up display. It's pretty basic. It shows you your speed, navigation information, and also any lane keeping assist or adaptive cruise control details. Let's talk about the other features that you get standard in the S6. You have a big old sunroof there, four zone climate control, heated seats for the first row. Now, this car has soft closed doors. They're pretty cool. So you just activate those by softly closing the door. It then sucks it in. But have a look at this feature here. So instead of having to pull the handle entirely, 
you just pull it a little bit. It has an electronic strike that unlocks the door and opens it. But I hear you asking, what happens in an emergency if all the power's cut? Well, you give it a harder pull and then it has a manual release on it. So I think that's a really clever feature and I like what they're doing there. You get electric seat adjustment with memory. You get child locks for the second row that stop the windows and the doors opening, but you can also configure them to stop the third and fourth zone of climate working. So if the kids are faffing about with stuff, you can stop that pretty quickly. You get ambient LED lighting. You can configure what that looks like here on the color combinations, how bright it is and all that kind of thing. But I love the fact that the Quattro symbol is backlit and then the rest of the car just has this really funky and cool mood lighting to it. But have a look at this. I haven't seen this before. The seat belts have LED lighting on them too, so they're easier to find at nighttime. So you have low and high speed autonomous emergency braking. You have adaptive cruise control with a self-steering function blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirrors. This LED here also doubles as an exit assistant. And the way that it works is if you have a car approaching or a cyclist and you go to open the door, it will light up and show you that there's stuff coming, including that blind spot monitor. You also have features that prevent you from turning into oncoming traffic. So the car's constantly looking ahead to prevent you from crashing it. <laughs> Thank you, Audi. And then on top of that, you have rear cross traffic alert and AEB that works forwards and backwards as well. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is the reverse view camera and just the litany of modes you can choose from. So that's your standard display, but you can go 3D where you're in charge of where everything is, or you have preset modes where it will zoom around. And if you wanna ditch 3D altogether, you can start then by picking your own destinations I just love everything you can do here and the amount of different angles you can choose from. It's not the highest resolution camera. I would have loved to see a little bit more detail in there, but I love the fact that you have so many different screens and sections to choose from. So what does the key look like? Here it is right here. You get the Audi symbol down the bottom. You have lock, boot, unlock, and then on the back, an S symbol, and then a whole stack of piano black. It's a proximity sensing key, so you just keep that in your pocket, grab the door handle, and when you come inside, you hit the start button. There is one more feature I want to talk about here really briefly, and it's part of the 48 volt system. Now, what is a 48 volt system? You can click up here to watch our GLE 450 review, where I go into a bit more detail about 48 volts and why manufacturers use them. But this car in particular uses a feature to fill the hole that you get with turbochargers, because when you lean on the throttle, you naturally get turbocharger lag before you get exhaust gases that come back around, spool the turbocharger, and then cram more air into the engine. This uses a 9.6 amp hour battery, and that battery is charged when this car goes into a coasting mode. Then the battery energy that's charged and put into that battery is then used to drive an electric compressor. That electric compressor generates air that it can cram into the turbochargers while it waits for the exhaust gases. So under light throttle loads, you're able to generate 70,000 RPM out of that electric compressor to push air into the turbochargers. And that means you're getting response from the engine in just 250 milliseconds. So it kind of acts like a supercharger in a way because it delivers you torque while you wait for the turbochargers to properly come on board with that air from the exhaust. So it's a really good system. I'm keen to see whether it actually works though. And we'll check that out when we go for a drive. Right, let's talk about practicality and we'll start with storage. Where are you going to put your phone? Well, there is a wireless phone charger in here so it slots in very nicely outside of that that center console really doesn't have a great deal of room but you will find two usb ports the sim card outlet and also an sd card slot that also slides forwards and backwards there's also room in here let's see if it fits a bottle oh, it's a bit of a tight squeeze actually it's a fairly normal size bottle and it's pretty difficult to get in there but you've got a 12 volt port there and then inside the door you can fit a bottle plus a couple of odds and ends near the driver's knee you also have a decent sized storage slot for i don't know stuff and then the glove box let's have a look at that it's not the biggest glove box in the world so once you put the manual in there there really isn't much room for anything else now what about seat comfort i love the way these seats look you have the s logo embedded into there plus this diamond quilting they actually squeeze you in really nicely. This seating position is fantastic. Love the steering wheel, it sits nicely in the hand. It's beautiful. And then you've also got the paddle shifters behind the wheel. All of this stuff's really easy to reach. The only downside is this screen is quite low. So if you do need to make any changes here, you're often taking your eyes off the road to look down, especially if you need to go to this one down below. So we're in the back seat. I'm gonna leave that open because it is quite dark in here. So what is knee room like? Knee room is decent, but toe room is woeful. My toes are like wedged under that seat. 
Headroom is okay too, but I think if you're slightly taller than me, you're gonna be rubbing your head on the top there. Now, where can you put your arm? Look at that, you actually have a really decent center armrest there that has a cubby hole in here and then two cup holders there. We'll see if they fit the bottle. Yeah, that fits well. And then inside the door, you also have bottle storage as well. we'll tuck those away. You have ISOFIX anchorage points. You can really see those seat belts with the LED lighting in there, which is pretty cool. And then you have map pockets as well. And there's also a ski port that you can lock and unlock from the boot. And that allows you to get access to your bags and skis and stuff. Down here, you'll find your four zones of climate control, plus two USB ports and a 12 volt outlet. You've also got air vents in the center console and also in the B pillar. Now, people go on about the amount of room you get in SUVs all day long, but sedans still offer plenty of storage space. So, crack that open, it's got a motorized boot, 530 liters of cargo space there. So it's massively deep and the lip is kind of big enough to get most of the stuff in that you need. Underneath the floor, you have a space saver spare tire plus a jack and a couple of other bits and pieces and then off to the side you have 12 volt outlet some hooks and then a first aid kit let's see how it goes gobbling up all of our luggage stick this in piece of cake now you can also drop the rear seats if you have enough room i'll show you how that works can't do it from the boot which is a little bit frustrating so you have to come into here and then this one as well Bob's your uncle. We've hit the road in the Audi S6. Under the bonnet is a 2.9 litre twin turbocharged petrol V6 engine. 331 kilowatts of power, 600 newton metres of torque. It sends all of that torque through an eight speed automatic transmission. The big advantage is that at low speeds, it's easy to park. There's no fussiness like you get with a dual clutch transmission. Now that all results in an official fuel economy figure of 8.4 litres per 100 kilometres. But in reality, you're not actually going to get really anywhere near that. And I mean, that's partly due to this engine. It is a petrol V6, it's turbocharged, and it's a fairly heavy car for what it is. And we are seeing a figure closer to 14 litres per 100 kilometres. Now, linked to that 48 volt system I spoke about earlier, the car can entirely switch off at speeds of up to 160 kilometres an hour. Now, the main benefit there is that all the systems will remain running but you're not using any fuel and it just coasts along. It also has a coasting mode while the engine's running where it decouples the gear. That means you're not getting any engine braking, but it's able to coast without anything but air effectively slowing it down. And then the second you touch the throttle or the brake pedal, it re-engages the gear and then begins to slow down normally. But finally, the system built into all of this is a vibrating sensor on the throttle pedal and it uses the GPS to figure out when you've got a speed change coming up or you're coming up to a set of traffic lights or a roundabout. And if it thinks that you can conserve energy by letting out of the throttle now and allowing the car to naturally slow down, it will give you the heads up on the display in front and then by pulsating the throttle pedal. Keep in mind the downside to this whole package is you need to feed it with 98 Ron premium unleaded all the time. It doesn't run on any cheaper fuel. Let's talk about the drive modes. There's a number of them to choose from, but the most frustrating part here is you need to take your eyes off the road and go down to the drive select button, which is buried all the way down here to select them. When you do click on that, you're presented with a whole bunch of options. You need to watch again to see what you need to select and then click on it. So it is a little bit much. You can choose from efficiency, which simply dulls throttle response, rolls back the amount of air conditioning. You can then go to comfort, which is just all about giving you that nice and serene environment. We're in comfort right now and the air suspension is sensational. 21 inch alloy wheels, it is riding like a magic carpet. I don't understand how they make a car with 21 inch alloy wheels and low profile tires ride as nicely as it is right now. It is seriously impressive. You've also got an individual mode which allows you to configure what you want the steering to do independent of whether it's in sport mode or whether you want the gearbox to be sporty, whether you want the exhaust on, all of that stuff you can configure on your own. Now what's sport mode like? Let's flick it over to dynamic as Audi calls it. So immediately I can see us going into S3 which is the sport mode. I can control the gears myself using paddle shifters or just let the car do it which I think is just the preferred option. The suspension's firmer, the steering is heavier. Let's see how it goes through some of these corners and it roll into the throttle. It is pretty wet at the moment. Oh, I love that exhaust sound. That's sensational. Okay, so Quattro all-wheel drive system is working hard to shuffle the torque around the car as required. Oh, man, 
that sounds so mm. good. That is addictive, I love that. Okay, so what is happening here right now is you've got that 600 newton meters of torque, but before the car comes onto boost naturally, the electric compressor's coming in and filling in the bottom end of the torque band. So right now at about 2000 RPM, I punch the throttle, and within 250 milliseconds, I'm getting that rush of air that charges the turbochargers and delivers that extra oomph that you need. That is really impressive. It is effectively lag free. This is unlike any other turbo V6 I've driven. That is really impressive. So the official zero to 100 figure is 4.5 seconds. Let's see if we're able to match that. Now, how does it all handle and what are the brakes like? So the brakes are absolute monsters. I mentioned earlier, you can get carbon ceramic, but I don't think you really need it. 400 millimeter is massive for a rotor. It actually handles impressively. It sits nice and flat through the corners despite its size. This is a big car, but it doesn't feel overly big behind the wheel. Steering feel isn't amazing. I would have liked a little bit more feel through the wheel, but you get a good sense of what's going on. It's not quite as sharp as, as a BMW or the E53, but for the most part, it flows really nicely. And the all wheel drive system does a fantastic job of just shuffling torque around the car there. Okay, so let's get back into comfort mode. Dive through my 7,000 menus to get to comfort. There it is, everything's back into comfort mode. It's all nice and quiet and serene now. What's it like in here in terms of road noise? So we're on a coarse chip surface at the moment and it's, it's whisper quiet. I know you're listening to this and going, when's he gonna get to the negatives? But it is really hard to fault this car. They've done such a good job with just refining everything and making it super smooth. You've got to remember that unlike an E53 or an M550 that are skewed slightly more towards performance, Addy's dialed it all back to give this that sort of relaxing feel behind the wheel. But you know that you know, when you stamp on the throttle, it's going to pin you back in the seat and then give you a little bark out of the exhaust. In that vein, visibility is pretty good. It is a big car, but I can see clearly out the front. The wing mirror is big enough with a little Okay, you're gonna help me here in the comments below. Is it convex or concave, that thing on the edge of the mirror? Um, it has a blind spot monitor built into it as well. And visibility out the back is pretty good. That window is decently sized and no blind spots to talk about either. So the Audi S6, it is seriously hard to fault. It is a beautiful car to drive and I think it looks sensational as well. I don't think it has quite the sort of razor edge to it that S cars used to have. But in saying that, this is the ultimate GT Cruiser. It is the ultimate car to get you from A to B nice and quick. And if you do come across a mountain pass on the way, it's gonna put a smile on your face as well. So go test drive this. I think it provides better value for money than the BMW M550i. You're getting a whole lot more kit in here. But on top of that, the E53 is massively more expensive than this. And I think this is arguably a better car to drive. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the new Audi S6. Is it hardcore enough to have an S badge? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button, follow it up with the subscribe and the bell icon that'll tell you every single time we publish something new. But until next time, take it easy.